Ready to supercharge your workflow with AI automation? Let's dive into the magic of N8N. Having a platform for AI and automation has streamlined my workflow so much. It means your local LLMs can work for you even when you aren't working with them interactively. So many folks show AI models as something you have to work with hands-on. Chatbots or visual interfaces to control them have to be actively used to control them. But I'd like to show you some of the capabilities of the platform I use to get it to work autonomously without any manual input interventions. I'm Matt Williams, and I was a founding member of the Olama team. I'm no longer in the project, but I'm still just as excited about what can be done with Olama, and I'm focused on sharing everything I find with you on this YouTube channel. So in this video, I wanna show you what I use to automate things for me. The platform is called N8N. I've been using it off and on for about four, maybe even five years. But it wasn't until recently that I've really started to unlock its full potential. It's always had the ability to link different applications and APIs together in a no-code kind of way. But recently, they made it super easy to also hook up different AI models directly into N8N's workflow. This has opened up a whole new world of possibilities for automating tasks and streamlining workflows. Now, first things first, let's look at what N8N is. It's a visual workflow automation tool that allows you to create custom workflows without coding. But if a bit of code would make something easier, you can add that too. Think of it like a web-based process builder. You can connect different apps and services together to automate tasks, send notifications, and more. Now, this isn't the first tool to do this. Years ago, there was Yahoo Pipes, which was incredible. Oh, so cool. Since then, simpler, less advanced tools like If This and That and Zapier have come out, along with Make, formerly known as Integromat, or Node-RED. Gosh, there are just so many tools like this. I did a video a few months ago about a tool called Defy, which has more of a AI focus. And there's a similar one called Flowwise. Now these are all great, but N8N is in a pretty unique position of having a strong automation platform that excels at the general stuff, plus the AI tools, all in one. I don't have to use one platform for AI and another for everything else. I also love the fact that you can use N8N as a hosted solution with N8N.cloud, if you aren't the type of person who wants to build out the infrastructure, or as a self-hosted solution, installing with Docker, or even just with NPM. I'm using two instances of N8N for my personal workflow. One is an instance up on a cheap droplet on DigitalOcean. In fact, it's the same machine that's running searching that I mentioned in Tuesday's video in the Olama course on adding search to AI. Actually, I also run Windmill on there, which is a no-code UI tool. The other instance is running locally on my M1 MacBook Pro. You don't have to run it in two places, but for my circumstances, it's what I need to do. The one up in the cloud is running as a Docker container, and the one that's local is installed with NPM. I can get into why I do that in another video if you're interested. Do you tend to find stuff like this interesting? If you do, consider liking and subscribing to this channel if you aren't already. I'm working on my first million subscribers, and your support means I only will need another 964,000 to go. I used to not mention this, but turns out it makes a massive difference. Okay, I have two types of workflows that I run with N8N. First are the flows that use AI. I have a great GPU in my main laptop, and I want to take advantage of that. It allows me to run complex AI tasks quickly. It has 64 gigabytes of VRAM, which means I can run even a 70 billion parameter model. Having a machine in the cloud with a comparable NVIDIA GPU would cost way more than a dollar an hour. 
which means it's at least $720 a month. But I also know that this laptop isn't online all the time. Sometimes a workflow is initiated by something I do on my phone when my laptop is off. So for that, I have that $12 per month instance in the cloud that's great, but doesn't have a good GPU. Okay, at this point, let's take a look at N8N so we can start to get our bearings. Now here is my instance of N8N up on DigitalOcean. You can see there are four workflows currently. I recently recreated my N8N setup and haven't fully populated them yet. Probably the most important one is the backup to Dropbox. Recently, I had a snafu with my Docker environment that was mostly because I was playing with OrbStack. Now, OrbStack is a Docker alternative, which is like a improved Podman. It totally screwed me over, so I am back to pure Docker since they don't really give you any benefits. But I found the backup workflow in the template selection of the NAN website, and after setting up the credentials with Dropbox, it took like a minute to get up and running. And in the past, I've used a similar template that saved to GitHub. Let's take a look at the add news to tweet and talk about workflow. It starts with a webhook, which I've hidden the actual URL. This waits for a trigger sent from somewhere else to start the workflow. I'll talk about that in a bit. The next node in this workflow is edit fields. This is one of hundreds of built-in nodes that do some sort of action. In this case, I'm taking content from the original source webhook and reformatting it. From here, it adds the content to two Superbase tables. There are lots of powerful ideas in N8N, but one of the exciting ones is support for external tools. So click this plus sign and choose action in an app. You can do something in any of these apps, and there are a lot of them. So for Superbase, I could do all these things. And for Todoist, I can do all of these things. So in my case, I add content to the news tweets table and the news table. I'll come back to the news tweets branch, but for the news table, I then pull all of today's content from the news table. Now I generate a document using code that shows all of today's news items. It's pretty simple code, but I recently found another node I could use to do this instead called document generator. N8N has a huge amount of built-in content, but you can also add community-created nodes as well. And they are easy to add to the system. Just come to Settings, then Community Nodes, then click Install and Browse and find the node you want. You can find some, some really neat things. The next node in our workflow is for GitHub. This looks in the specific repo and edits a file that has a name of whatever today's date is with a, a markdown extension. The contents of the file are the document that was generated in the earlier code step. And there you can see the commit message. This is great, except if the file doesn't exist. So there's an if block that checks if the last block errored. And if it did, then create the file and go back to the previous GitHub block. And if we go to that repo, we can see I've posted various news articles in the past, and here is one of the pages. Now, if I wanted to share this workflow with you, all I have to do is come up here to the top right menu and choose download. Or I can just select everything on the page and copy it, then paste it into a text editor or an email or anything else. I don't have to worry about cleaning up credentials because they're actually stored somewhere else in the app. If we come back to home, then click on credentials, we can see all the things I've set up integrations with here. Dealing with credentials, especially OAuth 2 credentials, is the biggest pain when doing any sort of integration, and they make it so easy in N8N. Back at the beginning of this workflow, I mentioned that it was triggered by a webhook. So what's doing that? Well, on my Mac, I use the Arc browser. And so I made a Chrome plugin with a button. When I click the button, it grabs the URL and title of the page and allows me to enter a description in a text box. And that is then posted to a webhook, the webhook in my workflow. And on my iPhone, I can use a shortcut that I can quickly access from Safari that does basically the same thing. So that adds new news items. Let's look at the flow to send the tweets. It starts at 7 a.m. every day. It first grabs all the tweets from the Superbase that haven't been sent yet 
And if there are any that need to go out, grab the first one. Record that it has been sent and send the tweet using the X API. Next, wait, wait some amount of time between 30 and 90 minutes. It's random to sort of simulate a real person finding stuff. Then if it's earlier than 8 p.m., create a file in a special directory. Now back at the beginning of the workflow, there was another node that watches for any changes in that directory. If there's a new file, then delete it and start the workflow again. So this sends tweets out at a random interval between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. automatically, and that's pretty cool. Now, there is one more piece to this process. In the GitHub repo of news, you may have seen that there was more text describing the article. That's done by AI on my machine. So let's open up N8N on localhost. I have a workflow here that runs every 10 minutes, and that gets all the rows from Superbase that don't have a summary. It then fetches the HTML from the site, and if there are any results, convert them to Markdown. In the previous video, I had just learned of a better way to do this, so I'll probably convert it to using readability to make it work a little bit better. Then it hands the text to Olama to create a summary of the text. I'm using Llama 3.2 3 billion parameter model with a 32K context size. Then it adds the summary to Superbase. And the other workflow on the DigitalOcean instance will update the GitHub doc. Now this was the first workflow I had built in some time, and I've been using it for the last month or so. It works really well, and it's pretty easy to come back to and update. Now it's not perfect though. The Olama integration, and well, all the AI model integrations are done through Langchain. So it overcomplicates things. And there are some processes that just have never worked for Langchain and Olama. Getting JSON output for use later in the flow is far more fiddly when Langchain's involved. And because all the integrations use the same process, it's a bit of a least common denominator kind of problem. Some of Olama's strengths are a bit lost in there. There are a few nodes that I think I'll build to make this and some other steps easier. If you're interested in seeing those, let me know. But it's a great no-code way to demonstrate some of the things I've shown in the past on this channel. So it might be nice to use it for a first draft of some of the apps I build. It's so much more powerful than a lot of the other tools out there, and it's just fun to use. Just the other day, I was watching Wolfs on Apple TV and making a workflow at the same time because it didn't require too much concentration to get even hard things done. I'll probably have to go back and fix some stupid things I did in the process. Well, what do you think? I have seen a lot of mentions of N8N in my comments and on the Discord. So have you done any interesting workflows with it? How about with a competing tool? I would love to see what you have done. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.